Howdy, everyone. Welcome to Cloud Native Live, where we dive into the code behind Cloud Native. I'm Taylor Dolezal, a senior developer advocate at HashiCorp, where I focus on all things infrastructure, application delivery, and developer experience. Every week, we bring a new set of presenters to showcase how to work with Cloud Native technologies. They will build things, they will break things, and they will answer your questions. Join us Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. This week, we have Amir here to tell us about Kubescape, an open source tool to test Kubernetes deployment security. This is an official live stream of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or ask any questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. And basically, please be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters. And with that, I'd love to hand it over to Amir to kick off today's presentation. Amir, take it away. Thank you very, very much, Tyler. Um, so I'm, I would start by sharing my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, that looks good. Great. So uh, thank you very much um, and, and welcome everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about Kubescape. If you're not familiar with Kubescape, uh, Kubescape is an open source project that uh, Armo released um, and we maintain it uh, together with uh, um, uh, you guys uh, and, and ladies, of course. And, and, and I'm going to share a very, very, very short presentation kind of explaining what Kubescape is and uh, why we developed it in the first place. Um, and then I'm going to share a little bit um, uh, on what's coming next. And then we're going to deep dive and I, I, will, go, I will show you a, a real use cases of how to use it uh, and what you can get out of it. Um, so Kubescape uh, is the first open source tool that uh, scans Kubernetes uh, according, oh, sorry, according to a, a multiple uh, frameworks. Uh, the idea is that uh, you can use Kubescape uh, to scan, I'm sorry for that. Uh, you, you can uh, you can use Kubescape uh, to scan a, a, your cluster. Uh, you can use your Kubescape to scan YAML files, handle charts, um, and, and and it gives you a really really nice report um, on on uh, what what is uh, misconfigured and how you need to remediate it. Um, it, it is really, really uh, um, uh, skyrocketing in the number of uh, uh, git stars that we got uh, and, and the love that we got from the, uh, uh, the community. Uh, and I really hope that uh, it will uh, continue. We have over uh, uh, 15,000 developers uh, who are using it to monitor their clusters. Uh, and you can see the, the name of the company and uh, persons who are using it. Uh, and I think that it's quite obvious why. Uh, the reason is uh, because um, um, misconfiguration um, is one of the uh, um, causes for data breaches. Uh, this is according to Gartner, uh, the number one cause uh, for uh, data breaches. And as you can see from a, a, a survey that Red Hat uh, conducted not, not a while ago, uh, you can see that people are worried uh, about misconfiguration uh, in their clusters. So um, that's, uh, that's why we created a, a Kubescape in the first place. Now, what Kubescape gives you today, um, and, and, and if you didn't try it, you could, you, I urge you to go and try it. Um, it's free, open source, uh, and it will stay free and open source forever. Um, it gives you the ability uh, to scan cluster YAML files and Helm charts. It has multiple frameworks. Right now, uh, we support uh, MITRE for Kubernetes uh, and the NSA and CISA uh, frameworks. Um, we give you an ability to create your own framework, and I will be talking uh, about it uh, later. Uh, it, can, uh, it can be inserted to your CICD pipeline. And as I will show you, you can identify drifts from uh, one scan uh, to the other. Um, when, when you're scanning for misconfigurations, most of the tests that, that, that are being done are very, very generic. Um, this means that in some cases, 
um, you, you will find irreasonable, uh, unreasonable uh, stuff in their uh, results. For example, uh, it will tell you that uh, um, a Q proxy is privileged. Okay, that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, in this case, we created exceptions that will let you uh, uh, personalize uh, the uh, results uh, and, and, and it will make sure uh, that you're focusing on the right things that needs to be remediated uh, or fixed. Uh, we give you a, a very easy risk score that you can follow and see the trends uh, over time. And uh, we show you the history uh, of all the tests. Uh, we understand that we are part of an ecosystem. Uh, so that's why uh, it is integrated into uh, uh, CICD pipelines. Uh, and and uh, I will show you how easy it is uh, to deploy it and use the UI. Uh, the UI is super friendly and super easy to understand and, and, and work with. Uh, and the cool part is that you don't need to install anything on the cluster. It's just copy, paste, run, and it works. Um, the next thing that we're going to develop uh, are, of course, more frameworks. Um, and, and this is where I'm, I'm kind of uh, opening a request to you guys. Uh, if you have anything uh, that, that uh, any framework that is of interest for you, please uh, shoot us an email and, and we will definitely uh, uh, try to uh, create it uh, for you. Uh, we are going uh, to extend the capabilities uh, to support if, um, 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 more uh, tests or controls uh, that are based on the worker node and API server settings. We are going to add uh, actually, we got uh, uh, help from uh, uh, the community and the community and so on in the community developed a plugin for uh, for one of the managed Kubernetes settings. Again, if you want, uh, we, we would love uh, you to, con to contribute more uh, in the project. Uh, we are going to introduce Slack integration so you can uh, send uh, your scan results uh, to your uh, uh, Slack channels. We're going to add recommendations. Uh, meaning that when you look at the exceptions, uh, sometimes it's hard to understand if something should be in, in an exception or not. What we are going to do is we are going to tell you, hey, this is a normal behavior. QProxy is supposed to be privileged. You can put it in, in, uh, in an exception and you're good to go. Uh, it's not a real misconfiguration. We are going to give you the ability to run a cron job uh, Cubescape is a cron job uh, and then scan your cluster on a regular basis. Uh, we are going to give you the ability to set uh, per, uh, the, the controls based on your uh, organizational need. Uh, for example, uh, one of the controls that we're going to introduce soon um, is the ability uh, to choose which container image repositories uh, you're willing uh, um, uh, to accept in your organization. Of course, it differs between uh, organ one organization to, uh, organization to the other, um, and, and this is where we're going to let you uh, uh, set it according uh, to your specific organization. We understand that risk, posture, misconfiguration is changing over time because the cluster is changing over time, and we want to show you the major changes in your, in your cluster. So this is the inventory information. We are going to show you in the graph, which I will show you in a second, what kind of big stones are happening uh, inside your cluster, like a new namespace or a new deployment is being introduced. The last thing that we are going to do before Christmas um, is the Arba graph. Uh, we understand, and this is a feedback that we got from a lot of customers, that managing Arba, understanding, following, RBAC in Kubernetes is quite challenging uh, and it, it involves describing a lot of uh, uh, Kubernetes objects like role, role binding, uh, etc. And then building the puzzle in order to understand what the role is doing, what the subject is doing, etc. What we did is we take this data out of your cluster and we build a graph out of it and we give you the ability to walk through the graph and understand what are the capabilities. We give you built-in queries and that you can simply query who has high privileges, uh, who has over uh, excessive privileges, etc. 
So this is the near-term uh, roadmap that we uh, hopefully we are going to deliver it by the end of this year. And then we have the long-term uh, um, roadmap where we are going to, again, add more frameworks uh, because this is the gist of the tool to give a lot of frameworks for a misconfiguration. We're going to uh, add container image scanning. Again, same feedback that we got from you. We are going to integrate the Kubernetes audit log in a, a run a, a detection a policies a, against it. We're going to add policies that, uh, um, that uh, will be, instead of just identifying issues, it can uh, really prevent these issues from occurring. And uh, the last thing, we are going to add auto-remediation, uh, which means that you will be able to say, if I have this issue, please remediate it for me. So that's that's the presentation, and uh, I, I, finish, uh, I finish the presentation. And from now, um, we are going uh, to go to the demo. Um, I'm going to switch over uh, to my browser. So I'm, I'm going to share in my browser in a second. Okay. Tyler, can you see my screen? Um, let... Yeah, it looks good to me. Okay, great. So, so what what I did here is I have a I have a, a Jenkins CI/CD uh, pipeline, um, and and what we did here um, we created uh, we created an environment uh, where we scan the YAML files before deployment, um, and here you can see I, I run my pipeline. Uh, I set the threshold to be seventy percent. Uh, this is the threshold that uh, if my uh, risk score uh, is uh, um, above uh, um, 70 percent uh, sorry if if my uh, my score is above 70 percent I can con I, I cannot uh, continue and if it's uh, lower uh, I uh, can uh, continue uh, so I'm so I'm running my uh, 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 my pipeline and you can see it is uh, it is failing. The reason that it's failing, uh, and, and you can see that, that this is the command that I uh, actually uh, ran uh, in my pipeline, and you can see that my score was 50, uh, and it was lower than 70, and this is why it failed. And if I go to the tasks, you can see the different controls that were tested, and you can see that, uh, uh, for example, the um, checkout service, uh, is mapping the host uh, uh, has a host PID, which is which is uh, not a really really good practice. Um, so we failed uh, the pipeline uh, from uh, uh, continuing. Now, if I go back uh, and I run it, and now I will set the threshold, let's say to be fifty, which is the score that I know I'm going to get. Uh, now it will work. So I'm I'm setting it. To 50, um, and you will see in a second that um, the pipeline succeeded uh, because we got 50 and the threshold was 50. But you can see that the same tests uh, have failed. So now let's go to my cluster and, and see how my cluster looks. Uh, so this is my uh, cluster, it's running on GKE. Um, and you can see I have a namespace called shop. Uh, and if I look on the pods, you can see that they are running. Uh, and basically what, they, what uh, uh, we did here, uh, we deployed the uh, hipster shop uh, application by Google. Um, and you can see I have an external IP. Please don't try to hack it, um, but you can enjoy, of course, connecting uh, uh, connecting to it. So when, uh, now I'm running it, and this is my front end, and you can see uh, that I can buy things for Christmas. 
um, and you know the application is working. And let's say that I want to scan it. Um, are you familiar with a good tool to check it? Um, so you can go to Cubescape, and this is the Git uh, page for Cubescape. Um, and you can you can see we have uh, basically all the information you need here, and some of it in the documentation that I will show in a minute. Deploying Cubescape is just um, taking this uh, command uh, and pasting it uh, into my cluster or the place where I'm running a kubectl or I have a kubectl installed on. Um, in this case, it will be here. And now it, it, it asks me uh, to run this command. Uh, so I copied and pasted it. And it's scanning. That's it. I get I get the results. Uh, you see that the result here is 72. It's a little bit different from running it in the CI CD because some of the tests require real real uh, objects like, uh, for example, network policies. Uh, you, we we cannot test it uh, when we have a YAML file, but we can test it when when uh, it is deployed. And you can see here that for uh, each one of the controls. It will give you a status if it failed or succeeded. We give you a description of the control. Uh, we give you the namespace and then the uh, deployments that failed. Um, and then uh, we give you how many uh, assets we scanned, how many failed, excluded. I will talk about exclusion in a second and how many uh, have passed. At the end of the report, uh, I get a nice uh, a link. Uh, the idea is that I can uh, send the reports to the UI, to our UI, or I can uh, uh, keep it in, uh, in uh, the CLI. By the way, we have a lot of options here. So, you know, customers, users who are savvy on privacy uh, can use things like uh, uh, Keep Local, uh, they can download, uh, they can download the, uh, uh, the frameworks, and run it without any uh, object being or result being uploaded to us. And you can read everything here in the documentation, which is uh, quite uh, extensive. Now, coming back here, if I click here, uh, basically I jump to the UI. Um, in my case, I jump to the UI because I'm a registered user. But if you're not a registered user, basically you get something like this. Um, it's quite easy uh, to register. Uh, you can register with a username and password, or you can register with Google, a GitLab, or a Microsoft. Uh, so coming back to my case, uh, you can see the, the uh, UI. The UI is quite easy to understand. Uh, I, I ran so many scans today uh, because of uh, uh, this demo. You can see them here, a uh, grouped. Uh, but usually people do not run uh, as many scans as I did in one day. Uh, you can see uh, the graph. So you can see, for example, that in my case, the trend, uh, my risk is going up, which is not good. Um, I would prefer that my risk would, would go down. And you can see here that since I ran a lot of tests, it went up and down and up and down. Um, you can see that uh, you have a score for each one of the frameworks, and we're telling you how many controls failed out of how many tests that you have. Uh, in the next release here, you will have the ability to add your own framework and choose controls uh, out of the existing controls to create framework that is suitable for your specific organization. And if you look at each one of the controls, you can see if it passed, uh, if it failed, uh, you can see the uh, control ID and when you click on it, uh, you get a detailed documentation telling you which framework uh, it, it is uh, running, the description, uh, the related resources that we are scanning in order to, uh, to see if this control uh, passing uh, or uh, failing, um, what we test exactly, the remediation, and uh, soon we are going to have examples here that will show you what is a good um, uh, setting versus a bad setting. 
And we have a description, again, of the control and the remediation of the control. Now, since we're running uh, tests, uh, scans, uh, you can see all the different scans that you did, and you can jump uh, and see these uh, scans and uh, review them. Uh, and we always compare it to the previous scan. Um, so you can see, uh, for example, no, I, I, I ran too many scans, uh, um, which uh, today, uh, so probably we will not see any difference. But here, for example, uh, you can see that I had 41 uh, bad resources and it went down to 18. So it's good. Someone uh, worked and remediated stuff for me and I'm uh, very, very happy uh, for that. Um, so I can always compare it and I can always compare it. Now, let's say um, I want to see which resources failed. So I can click here and I can see the namespace. I can see the, de the, deplo the deployment that failed and, and uh, the deployment name. I can set exceptions, uh, exceptions uh, on a specific resource or on the entire namespace. Um, the difference is that when I do it on a namespace, new deployments that will come on the namespace will be in the exception list. And if I do it on a resource, uh, it will be uh, based uh, on a specific uh, resource. And I'm going to show uh, exceptions uh, uh, in a second. Um, let's say that uh, uh, the, this uh, uh, deployment, uh, the checkout service should be a, a should have these uh, uh, settings uh, in, in our case. I can set it as an exception. And once I set it as, uh, as an exception and I run scan, so I'm going to scan it again. Then it will take me a few seconds. OK. So if I come back. Um, and I need to refresh my screen in order to see the new scan. So this is my new scan from now. Um, you can see now that uh, I, oh, it will come in a second. It takes uh, a few seconds uh, for this uh, to load. Uh, something that we're here working on. Uh, Really quick, Amir, uh, there were a couple of questions in the chat. Would you prefer yeah, I sure. ask them now or? Okay, cool. Um, uh, one thing that came in was Kubernetes audit logs. It would be amazing to have them out of GKE. And then a follow-up question was, is there any kind of specific configuration to scan GKE clusters? So, so we scan right now. What we do is we we are connecting to the uh, um, to uh, kubectl, and we can get all the objects that the API server exposes. Um, in in the coming releases, we are going to have specific integrations with GKE um, and AKS and uh, EKS. Um, and and again, if if someone uh, from the audience would like to uh, contribute this uh, uh, code, we will be more than welcoming it. Did, awesome. did this answer the question, Tyler? Yeah, I think so. If, if there is any more follow-up, please feel free to ask in Twitch and I can relay that. Uh, I had a few more quick things and then uh, definitely let you get back to your demo. Uh, one, one person remarked that I get an error when I try to buy something. Can we debug it so I can order a hairdryer today? Uh, <laughs> I thought that was a good one. Uh, <laughs> And then, uh, and then K9's rules uh, definitely agree to that. And uh, and then a final comment was, I can never remember how to navigate inside. I always get stuck inside of a namespace looking at jobs instead of pods or something in reference to K9's. But uh, looks like that mm -hmm. is all the commentary right now. But uh, if you do have any more questions, please feel free to throw those into chat, and I'll ask them to Amir. But uh, with that, Amir, I'd love to throw back to you. Thank you very much. So th th this is the control uh, view. We can also we also have the uh, resource view, and basically the idea is that uh, you can uh, um, choose a resource, let's say deployment, um, and then you can see um, which this deployment, the currency service, you can see which controls it is failing on. Uh, so it's kind of the uh, the opposite. 
and the, the opposite uh, view of a, a failed uh, a control is uh, failed uh, resources. Now, jumping back to the command line, we also support uh, setting exceptions in command line. So when you scan, uh, you can decide that uh, you want to scan, uh, but you don't want to scan uh, specific namespaces. Uh, so if we go uh, to our Git, uh, you can see that uh, we um, that, um, we have an example uh, for uh, uh, for that uh, as well. So you, you can see that it has the exclude uh, namespaces, but we also have the ability uh, to do uh, the same exclusion as I did in the UI, uh, we can do it also uh, in the CLI. Uh, so uh, we have the exception uh, JSON. Uh, in, in this case, what I'm uh, telling uh, uh, my uh, Cubescape is don't scan these specific namespaces when I'm running the uh, NSA framework. Uh, and basically, uh, uh, right now, it's a uh, part of uh, uh, the uh, Git, and you can uh, you can see it uh, there. But uh, uh, soon uh, we will have it uh, in our documentation as well. Uh, so uh, I'm running it uh, now uh, with the uh, with my exception JSON. You will see it's running the same uh, uh, the same way, but probably the risk score. Um, will uh, will uh, uh, change uh, a bit. Uh, so when I look at it in the UI, OK, uh, let me see. OK, so and, and, and I can decide again if, if I want to see it in the UI uh, or uh, I want to see it uh, in uh, in the CLI, um, I think that that all in all, uh, we're basically uh, uh, we covered most of it. Uh, if you have any specific question, uh, now would be a good time. All right, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat, and I can get those asked. It looks like right now. We don't have any, but uh, I, I definitely have a few on that front. Um, so Cubescape's a really interesting tool. I uh, heard about it, you know, just before the session and got to check it out. I thought that was quite interesting. When I delved a little bit deeper, I was curious as to where the idea for this tool came up and if you have any insight around kind of like the formation of this tool. So we, we, we've been uh, doing uh, posture for a while. Uh, we've, we've been developing it uh, for uh, our own use. And when we saw that the uh, uh, NSA, and, and we, we were kind of thinking about how uh, um, we, we need to uh, release it as part of the product, our product. Um, and, then, and then we saw that the uh, NSA released the uh, hardening guide for a, a Kubernetes. And we thought that it would be a good idea. Um, and, and, you know, we saw the buzz around it. And, and we thought it would, it would be a good idea to contribute it to the community, like other proje uh, uh, projects, um, like a, um, a project that scans the CIS benchmark or other frameworks. Um, and at the end, it led us to a conclusion when, when we saw that. Uh, um, the industry is really using it and, 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 uh, and you know, they gain value out of it. Uh, we decided that we don't want to stop here. Uh, and our goal uh, is to be the, co the company that gives uh, different frameworks uh, that, that, that uh, uh, different customers can use and gain value out of it. What we saw is that, uh, you know, we, we, we are working in a tech industry, in a tech world, uh, people um, are super occupied with a lot of stuff, uh, and they are really, really appreciative when when uh, when you create uh, these controls for them, and they can just easily run it and enjoy the value out of it. Um, and 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 now that's our goal. Our goal is to create more frameworks and give it to users 
Uh, so, so they would use it for to solve real problems in their day-to-day -day job. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, one of my personal curiosities is always to hear about where the tool came from and kind of what that motivation was to create that or donate that or kind of, you know, uh, work with that. So thank you. Thank you. Um, when it comes to uh, some of the happy paths for scanning and things that might not be as optimal with scanning, are there any uh, systems or instantiations of Kubernetes that make this easier to work with or more difficult to work with, you know, something like AWS Fargate or something like that, perhaps. So, yeah, so right now we, we look at Kubernetes. Um, so probably, I'm not sure if it will work on Fargate, probably not. Um, um, so, so it will work on any uh, distribution of Kubernetes as long as you have the permissions to run um, uh, the the controls. So, for example, if, if we have a control that needs service accounts or to check your service account configuration, if you don't have the RBAC privileges uh, for service account, uh, this specific control will fail. But other than that, um, if if you're running the cluster and you have a kubectl to the cluster, you can run uh, everything. By the way, we are developing an in-cluster component uh, and, and then customers, uh, users uh, will probably install a, a, our, a, a namespace with Kubescape and other capabilities inside their cluster uh, via Helm or any uh, other uh, capability. Um, it's there down the road, it will be uh, out there and it will give more, more uh, capabilities and, uh, and uh, features uh, to users who are going to adopt that. I think that one of the feedbacks, the early feedbacks that we got from the community was that for them, it's super cool to run Kubescape because it doesn't require any installation. And uh, so, you know, they can, they can uh, run it as, as I did a few minutes ago. It's easy, it's easy to understand. Um, you can you can uh, register and enjoy the UI. The UI is super simple. You can you can uh, and make it uh, um, uh, and, and, and adjust it to your organization. Uh, and 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 we are you know we are very responsive on Git. So you know people that open Git issues with us, we we answer maximum twelve hours, and that's because uh, and most of our development team is in Israel. Um, and and uh, uh, many of the users are in the U.S. Uh, or uh, the Far East. So that's the reason. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you so much. We had another question come in that asked, uh, is it working in an air-gapped environment yet? Yes. So so I, I started to mention that. Um, and, and please uh, follow the, 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 the documentation that we have. Uh, basically, uh, what you can do uh, is uh, you can use Kubescape um, and, and everything is written here in the documentation. I don't want to repeat it. You, you can uh, uh, use Kubescape. You can download uh, the definition of the frameworks. Uh, and then once you do that, uh, you can uh, use it to scan uh, via CLI and uh, you can use flags like, uh, uh, like keep local um, that doesn't send any data to our SAS uh, UI, um, and, and, and you get uh, the same results uh, in, uh, in the CLI, and you can plug it to your uh, CI CD as long as you keep uh, updating uh, the frameworks, you're good to go. You don't, you don't need to be connected to the internet. Nice, nice, good to know. I need to yeah. try that out with uh, some of my uh, Raspberry Pi clusters that I have here at my house that uh, haven't I, I haven't connected to the Wi-Fi yet. So be a good test for <laughs> for an air gap setup. Cool. Let, let me know how it works, Tyler. We, we... Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> uh, one of the things that you went through were some of the recommended ways to run Kubescape. And, uh, you know, you had talked about a Helm chart. You have that ability to kind of, you know, run that from the shell. Are there any thoughts around kind of like what the recommended way for most contexts might be for running this tool? Is it via the shell and like an operator typing it out? Or is it a Helm chart or a scheduled run or, or anything like that? So, so uh, 
you know, I'm, uh, everyone, uh, you know, different people, different organizations have different uh, use cases and uh, requirements. So, you know, I cannot tell you how I advise people to run it. We run it as part of uh, our CICD. Uh, so, you know, we, we are 100% Kubernetes company. Uh, all the all the things that we do, all, all our backend is running on Kubernetes. So we uh, use Kubescape in our CICD pipeline to identify misconfigurations that might happen to us as well. And so, you know, eating our own uh, dog food. Um, and then and then we scan the cluster, the clusters using a cron job. Um, and and uh, our DevOps engineer um, is, is watching it um, uh, on, on a daily basis. Soon, he's going to have it in Slack. Uh, so, you know, he, he will be very appreciative on that. Um, so, you know, that's, that's my uh, two cents uh, for you guys. Cool. Cool. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I know that the more and more that I learn about technology and the more that I stay in the industry, I keep finding myself saying, uh, hearing somebody's problem and then answering back with, well, that depends. And I find that that's a far more common answer than I've ever expected. So uh, it's, it's difficult to get the context correct. And it's really important to realize that everything is trade-offs. Nothing is 100% good or 100% bad. There are just different considerations to think through. And that's it can be difficult. It's, it's really complex. Um, Speaking of that, uh, do you have any interesting stories around vulnerabilities that you found, either personally, like things that were surprising, or any that you've heard from people using this tool that they uh, didn't expect or were just like, oh my gosh, I didn't, you know, had no idea this was a vulnerability? So, so actually, uh, one of the things that we, we, we decided uh, as a company, um, we decided that we want to be always uh, to try to be the first ones uh, um, to uh, um, add to Kubescape information on new vulnerabilities, vulnerability mainly vulnerabilities in uh, uh, Kubernetes. So, just to give you an example, uh, last Thursday, um, this vulnerability you can see it here on the screen um, was published. Oh, I think. The uh, I, I, uh, I muted your uh, screen, and so can't sh uh, can't see that unless you share. Again. Oh, okay, Sorry, okay, okay. So, so, so uh, um, uh, last Thursday, uh, the nginx vulnerability um, uh, was disclosed. Uh, it, it, um, um, I don't know if uh, everyone knows the nginx vulnerability, but basically, nginx has a, a very, very uh, strong service account tied to it. Uh, and, and in some conditions, uh, you can uh, you can expose this uh, service account uh, and uh, get uh, access to secrets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, so it was disclosed on Thursday evening Israel time, probably morning uh, U.S. time or uh, West U.S. time, um, and on Friday lunchtime uh, we released Cubescape with uh, a version that has uh, the ability to test your cluster against this vulnerability. It's super important for us uh, to give the users the ability to understand if they're running um, uh, something which is vulnerable. Uh, and yesterday, uh, I, I tend to have, I'm, I'm the VP Pro, I haven't introduced myself, I'm the VP product of uh, Armo. Um, and uh, I, I talk with users from time to time. I'm, I'm the person who's nagging the user. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm the person who's contacting the users, uh, asking them to give us feedback, to give us the direction, how can we help them? Um, and, and I had a talk with a customer who told me, um, I ran Cubescape, I found two vulnerabilities in my uh, live cluster, uh, and it helped me uh, to identify it and remediate it. Um, he, di he didn't want to tell me exactly which vulnerabilities, uh, but you know, he told me that he, he, he ran it and he found vulnerabilities. And you know, it, it's, it's, it always makes you happy that you created something that gives value. Um, so I hope it answered your question. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that that's, that really does make a difference, being able to see that. And nothing feels better too, right, than being able to see that there are 40 issues and you bring that down to 18 or two or zero. That's, that's always a good feeling on that front. Uh, and, and we got your sh uh, screen sharing again, so you should be good on that front. Um, yeah. so if there's anything that you want to go through. Um, 
Awesome. With that, uh, if anyone else has any questions that they'd like to go through, uh, please feel free to share on that front. And then um, if there's anything that you're excited about with the project, I know in your slides you had kind of talked about some of the things that were next up for the project, Amir. It, if you wouldn't mind bringing that back up, I, I'm kind of curious to take a look at that again, as well as uh, kind of hear about some of the things that you're most excited about when it comes to um, you know what you're working on, what's, what's up next for the project. Can you see my screen now? Yes, I, I see your browser and the uh, restream uh, tab. Oh, so let me let me probably I didn't share the entire screen. So no worries. Um, I feel like that's still despite all that we've been through around the world, uh, streaming is still one thing that we're always <laughs> trying to work out the UX on. <laughs> so I, I hope you see my screen now. Uh, I, I, I don't see it now, but uh, but uh, no bother if that doesn't come up. So, you know, personally, I, I like the roadmap. Um, um, I created it together with, uh, with the users I, I've been uh, talking to. Um, but I think that the, the part uh, that is uh, really, really uh, interesting um, for me is the fact that we are going to add more controls and put them in, in different frameworks and you will be able to run any framework that you want. So you don't need to go uh, and, and, you know, many, many of the users that I talk to, they collect open source uh, uh, tools and they kind of stitch them together uh, in order to create, uh, um, you know, a, a solution that will protect their clusters. Uh, it can be that they take uh, um, one uh, tool to do the image scanning and one tool to do the audit log analysis and one tool to do the RBAC management and one tool for CIS and one tool for best practices and one tool. And they end up being with a lot of tools. Um, and we want to be the, the right tool that gives you everything you need uh, in order to protect your cluster. Um, and, and, and that's why I'm very excited when we release a, a new framework and we see customers who are running it and using it. Um, and, and soon they will be able to create their own framework and adjust it to their uh, own needs. Um, so, you know, it's, it's like asking, when, when you ask me what is my favorite uh, um, feature in the roadmap, it's like asking a father uh, uh, which son he likes the most. And I like all my kids. <laughs> That's it's so true. It's uh, I, I know that uh, I've, I'm the eldest of three, and I know my siblings and I would always ask our parents, you know, who's who's the favorite, and they would never give an answer, which is <laughs> which is the best answer. Exactly. Yeah, that's funny. The, there's um that that also reminds me of one of my favorite comic uh, strips that I'll, and I'll go ahead and put that in chat for those of you that have seen it. Um, you'll you'll uh, remember that the standards uh, XKCD comic where. It starts off saying there are 14 competing standards, and then somebody is just like, "We'll come up with one to unite them all." There are 15 competing standards, and uh, it's <laughs> just kind of illustrating how difficult it can be to kind of get everyone's buy-in and, and kind of make things happen on that front. So, again, you know, the whole it depends trade-offs makes it difficult to kind of come to agreements on that front. And thank you for working on such a cool tool to help bring all these things together because. Like you said, you, it might be easier to go kind of like with the CIS standards or, you know, whatever it might be. But when it comes to actually getting an understanding of what your entire security perspective looks like, it's helpful to have all of these to take a look at and to benchmark your clusters against. So, so thank you so exactly. much. Exactly. And, 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 and again, we, we are very open to feedback. And if you have anything, um, just, you know, drop it on on uh, on git or on our discord channel we have a discord channel we're constantly watching it um we have a um and we have a, a developer a channel there a announcement channel there so you know you can register to our discord and, uh, and be part of the community um we we, we are very uh, uh, focused on uh, uh, cubescape and making it uh, better for your uh, um, use. So, you know, it's, we, we create it for you uh, and, and we need you 
to be with us uh, on that. Absolutely. And I'm honestly curious to hear any of your use cases or stories or kind of things that developed from that too. So please feel free to share those. Uh, I'd be very curious to hear. Um, Awesome. I have one more question, but uh, uh, we do have a few more minutes. So if there are any questions that you want to get answered, please f feel free to throw those into the chat. Otherwise, we can get things kind of closed out and I'll uh, give you some time back. Um, the, so drawing to the end, one of the questions that I always like to ask is, uh, how, what's the best way to get involved with the, with the project and contribute in meaningful ways, you know, whether it be documentation or if there's a certain, uh, if there's a certain perspective or, or set of features that you're trying to add, what are some of the ways that people can most, uh, beneficially getting, get involved for the project? So we, we uh, if you look at, uh, at our Git, um, there are some uh, uh, issues that we uh, marked uh, as um, we're asking uh, people to uh, uh, help us in, 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 in contribute uh, code to. Um, so, you know, we, we, we constantly uh, watch our Git and, and, and we are very, very active uh, on that. Uh, so I think this is the best way uh, for someone uh, to start the discussion with us. Of course, if needed, uh, we can uh, move to uh, Slack, Discord, um, emails, old telephone calls. Uh, you know, you if, can, do you, you can support call. carrier pigeons or anything like that? <laughs> That's usually no. what I prefer. <laughs> I don't think that pigeons can, can fly that uh, far, but uh, <laughs> um, did, did pigeons fly over the Atlantic Ocean? I, I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, so we, we can uh, we, we can definitely jump on any uh, medium and, and, uh, and uh, solve it. And we do uh, appreciate help. Um, so, yeah, um, but let's start with Git. I think that this is the channel uh, that we uh, that we uh, observe uh, the most. And of course, the Discord and uh, Discord channel um, is a very, very good uh, medium as well. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I did have one, I did see one more question come in. Will there be support for CIS? Yes. CIS support will come toward the uh, beginning of uh, 2022. Um, I don't know if it will be uh, January or March, but it will be uh, somewhere in between. Um, and and uh, it will be uh, it will be supported as well. Awesome. Uh, we had another comment that said uh, support for RFC 2549 is important. Uh, but uh, I'll definitely have to read up yeah. on that one. I'm not sure that one offhand. Yeah, 24, I'm writing it to myself. So Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'll go ahead and put that in the uh, in our chat. But uh, okay, excellent. Great. Great. Oh, I, uh, IP over Avian Carrier. Yes, absolutely. Sorry, <laughs> it didn't make the, it didn't make the correlation. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, I uh, with uh, talking about data transfer and everything on that front. There's uh, 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 I, I I worked for a previous company where we did talk a lot about data transfer and kind of the rate at which it would be faster to kind of load it up either on a USB device or a big hard drive and actually like drive it, ship it, fly it somewhere faster than being able to transmit it over the wire. So uh, carrier pigeons are important. Uh, thank you so much okay. on that. For <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I understand the context. Okay. Awesome. Well, I think those are all the questions that we've had. Thank you so much, Amir. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining the latest episode of Cloud Native Live. It was great to hear from Amir about Cubescape and different ways that you can test your Kubernetes deployments. Uh, we also really loved the interaction and questions that we got from everyone in the audience. And don't forget that we bring you the latest Cloud Native code every Wednesday at 11 AM Eastern time. Next week, we'll have uh, Karen Chu and Kent Rancourt presenting So What's New in Brigade 2. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next week. And with that, Amir, any parting words or, or things that you'd like to let the fans know? Thank you very much, and please use Cubescape. Awesome. Well, with that, thank you so much, everyone. We hope you have a wonderful rest bye of your bye. day, and we'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye.